And now, a can't miss moment from the Charlie James Show. Uh, Thirty-three trillion dollars in debt. You were the uh, only Republican from South Carolina to vote for raising the debt limit. What was your thought process behind that? Well, I mean, this was a plan that was before us. Um, I saw three options, either default on our nation's debt, which was either perceived or real. I believe the market would have uh, taken it badly and the stock market would have done bad things that would have affected um, a lot of my constituents, uh, 401ks and IRAs. That was a real possibility. And and what it would have done possibly to the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, people losing faith with us. We're already seeing that happen in energy petrodollars. Yeah. traded in rubles and RMB. So uh, that was the first thing, either default this bill as, as weak as it was, or as I mentioned earlier, moderate Republicans and Democrats discharging a clean debt ceiling increase and get no reforms. What the FRA actually get, did was it, it had some small cuts. It had caps. It sort of set up the debate that we're having today on real spending because it didn't spend a dollar. It just expanded the credit line of the bank uh, from the bank for the nation so that if we needed to borrow money to keep spending, we could. So it didn't spend any money. Uh, it, it had a small increase, uh, a decrease rather, for the IRS being able to hire agents this year for its 87,000 agents. Um, it called back a lot of COVID funds uh, that was necessary to end this whole COVID mess that we've seen. It added work requirements for welfare. So I thought a welfare reform was important. And then we had some energy issues in there that were critical to our state of South Carolina being able to meet its baseload energy generation um, because we were at a point of criticality in South Carolina. So Mount Valley Pipeline really freed up gas on the pipeline for us. We were able to get that language in there, get some other energy language with FERC being a lead agency for permitting pipelines that we have to build out in this country, uh, a shot clock on how long they had to do the permitting process, paperwork reduction for uh, the companies that build pipelines, because we need to build out a pipeline infrastructure system in this country to produce more gas, deliver more gas, utilize more gas, and export more gas. So it had some good stuff in it. It wasn't perfect, um, but it was a step in the right direction to set up this battle right now where we can have 20 to 30 percent cuts off discretionary spending. You know, you talk about the pipelines. If the Biden administration had their way, there would be nothing flowing through those pipelines. Um, what about the, uh, the 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 war on energy that the Biden administration is waging? Well, it started on day one with ending mm-hmm. federal leases onshore and offshore. And now we just see that uh, he canceled uh, the project up in Alaska and the National Petroleum Reserve um, strategic uh, area there in, the, in Alaska. Then we just saw he ended uh, uh, any oil and gas production on federal land in uh, New Mexico, which is yeah. very rich in energy resources. This is a war on energy production. That's why you're paying more at the pump for gasoline, and that's why you're paying more for goods and commodities at whatever store you shop at. Inflation is directly related to uh, the cost of energy. You're exactly right. And I thought this was supposed to be uh, transitory, but it seems to be a little more permanent uh, than they made it out to be. So uh, there is an impeachment inquiry going on in Washington about, what, eight, uh, eight seven, eight days from now, the uh, first hearing is going to be taking place? Yeah, and I applaud what uh, Chairman uh, Jamie Comer on uh, oversight and governmental relations uh, reform and uh, and Jim Jordan, the chairman of the judiciary, have been able to uncover thus far about the uh, Biden family and the, the ties to Hunter Biden and his dad during the uh, vice presidency, the bank records, the 20 shell companies they set up to launder money from uh, Chinese and uh, Ukrainian and possibly Russian businesses. Mm-hmm. We've been able to un- uncover a lot that shows that there may be a there there. So, uh, this in, impeachment inquiry gives them a few more tools in the toolbox to go and get the subpoenas uh, actually adhered to for bank records and uh, records from the FBI on, on their investigation of Hunter Biden's laptop and his business dealings. So the impeachment inquiry just gives them a little more strength, a little more teeth, a little more muscle uh, to, to really start building a case because we can't look like clowns if we go to the floor like Democrats did in an impeachment. We've got to build a case just like a criminal case. You don't go until you're ready. You don't go until you have all the evidence. And you don't go until you're pretty sure you can get a conviction. You know, um, we have seen uh, with the Durham report, we found out that the intelligence community actually interfered in 2016. They interfered in 2020 when 51 intelligence agents signed off on that letter about Hunter Biden's laptop. And now, obviously, they're, they're trying to do the same thing again. When are we when are the Republicans in the House and the Senate really going to start learning how to fight like a Democrat? 
Well, I mean, we need to fight better. There's no doubt about that. I think we're trying to fight on this spending bill we talked about earlier. But uh, I think going after these agencies and their budget with the appropriations process, start cutting budget and directing funding is the first way. Uh, and then continue to oversight, show the American people how corrupt this Biden administration and, and past Democrat uh, um, uh, administrations and their agencies have been to go after Trump with the Steele dossier, um, which the Durham report reported. Uh, to go after Hillary Clinton and her involvement in it. She paid for mm -hmm. the company that paid for the Steele dossier. Uh, I look at Strzok and Page and Rosenstein and McCabe and Comey and all the FBI agents who are involved in that. And, you know, somebody needs to be prosecuted. Uh, right now, we're a little distracted with the, um, the, the Biden family and Hunter Biden because there's so much there. But I hope we one day get on trying to do something about all those players that were involved in trying to stop Donald Trump from becoming a great president. You know, uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, I, you keep talking about the moderate Republicans. Um, what, my idea is just let the moderate Republicans expose themselves and bring it up to the American people uh, during primary time. Is there going to be the political courage in Washington to go after these people that you just mentioned? I think so. I mean, Look, there's just so many things to look. You look at Biden's war on energy. You look at the IRS and the 87,000 agents. You look at uh, the Hunter Biden uh, issue. You look at the Durham report. You look at Hillary Clinton's involvement in the Steele dossier. You look at all the members of the FBI I just mentioned. Uh, you turn around and you look at other things this agency, these agencies under this administration are doing to target the American people, cost them more money out of their pocket for normal living. You know, there's just so much. It almost seems like it's a true cloud piven strategy to yeah. overwhelm the system. And every time we start down one path to go after, say, the, the Strzok and, and Page and Rosenstein and the crowd of the FBI, we get distracted because all of a sudden Hunter Biden's laptop crops up and we see maybe some involvement and corruption in the Biden family. And maybe that takes more attention. So it almost seems like it's tried, they're trying to overwhelm us and keep us from being able to do anything. Don't miss the Charlie James Show. Weekdays 3 to 7 on News Talk 98.9. W-O-R-D. The voice of the Carolinas.